Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome back for another card video. Today's card uses the Valley Berries stamp by Memory Box. I did another card on this a couple of weeks ago. Um, I colored it with some Stampin' Up! markers and I stamped it down. There it is right here. And uh, then I'm also going to be using the Stripe Greeting set by Simon Says Stamp. I love the set. It's got a lot of really nice, interesting, different sentiments in it. And I'll be coloring with my Gonzai Tombi watercolors. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out my palettes right now and get them ready. So first I'm going to get my stamp and ink it up with some Versamark ink. You can see it kind of popped off the block a little bit. These stamps are a little similar. I'm not going to compare them totally to the Stampin' Up! ones that fall off the block a lot, but if you just hold them down for like four or five seconds, it'll stick right to the block and it won't come off. So I'm going to stamp this at the bottom so that I have some of the branches kind of popping up from the bottom. And then I'm going to cover it with some embossing powder. So this is going to be white embossing powder and that way I can see it. So when I stamp again, I won't cover any of it. So I'm going to ink it up again with my Versamark and then I'll place it kind of in the upper left hand corner so I get some more branches on the side and kind of wrap it around across the top and then I'll uh, sprinkle some more embossing powder on this part and then I'll heat it all together. So I didn't heat that first one, I just sprinkled the powder on. So now I've got powder on everything and I'll heat it to set it. I'm using Strathmore 90 pound watercolor paper. I like to use the lighter weight one rather than the 140 pound because I find it easier to layer on the card without warping. So I'm going to be using my big fat brush again, which I've used a lot. A lot of people have asked about this. It's Simply Simmons number 12. Sorry, that was a little blurry there, but it's a big fat round brush. And whenever I have to do watercolor over an entire panel, I just spray the whole thing rather than brush the water on. You can see I'm spraying a lot of water on the cardstock and that just sort of gets it ready for color. Now with these Gonzai Tombi watercolors, you really need a giant jar of water because the water gets dirty really quickly because these paints are very opaque, so they're kind of thick. And uh, when your paper starts to curl up a little bit, what I like to do is just take a paper piercer and I just poke it in the middle. And over time, it will um, straighten out a little bit so I won't have to press it down with that paper piercer. I always start with my lightest color first and I'm going to be doing diagonal swipes of color this time just for something different. And so I've laid down this mustardy yellow color and the next thing I'm going to do is grab some of this uh, blue. It's kind of a royal blue and I'm going to tap it right there next to the yellow. So I'm not going to blend it into the yellow really very much because it'll immediately start to turn green. So I'm just going to kind of go right next to it and uh, I'll just keep picking up some water. These paints are really thick and they don't blend that much on their own. You kind of have to force it a little bit, which is nice because then you don't get too much over blending. But once I get my blue down, I'm going to get some water on my brush and just tap a few drops of water right on the border between those two colors. And then the water will kind of do all the work. You don't have to, to blend it too much because it can get kind of muddy in there if you do too much blending. So I'm going back and adding just a little bit more blue to make it a little darker. I'm going to move those two colors out of the way because I'm done with those. I'm going to grab a darker blue now. I'm working my way towards black. I'll have the numbers uh, of these colors on my blog post so you'll know exactly which uh, palettes I used. So I'm moving pretty quickly here. I've got a lot of water and paint on my brush. And you see it when I moved my brush back to the palette, I dropped a little bit on the yellow. You can see that dark blue spot and I did not like it at all, but watercolor is very forgiving. I'm just grabbing a tissue and I'll just dab it because uh, the cardstock is really wet. So the color comes right up and I didn't even have to replace it with any of the yellow. Anyway, so now I'm done with the dark blue and I'm gonna grab some black and I'm gonna make this really dark. And that's what I love about these watercolors is that you can make the color very, very dark. And it will fade a little bit as it dries, but for the most part, you're gonna get some pretty vibrant colors with these watercolors. So, you know, it's always hard to know when to stop. And I was really proud of myself. I just did a couple of drops of blue uh, where I missed it in the corner. And then I added a couple of extra water spots between the two blues just to get them going a little bit more and uh, blending a little bit more. And then I put my jar away and let it dry. So that's all I did with this. So this one was pretty quick. I've got a piece of uh, Nina Solar White cardstock, which is cut to about, I think, two inches, and I'm centering my sentiment in the middle. Uh, I'm going to be using some Versafine Black Onyx ink because it's a pretty thick sentiment, so it's got some uh, you know, thick lines, and I want to make sure I get good coverage, and I always get really good coverage with this Versafine ink. 
Now I'm going to cut this piece to be a, uh, an inch and a half total. So I'm centering my sentiment on the ruler and then I'm going to mark it an inch and a half total. So then I'll trim that out with my trimmer. Now my thought here with this sentiment is to break up my background a little bit. So I love the background, it's really pretty, but it is kind of busy. And uh, so I thought having a, a wide, thick, white sentiment in the middle would kind of just give it a little bit of relief uh, for the eye. So I'm going to mark a line an inch and an eighth from the bottom and three inches from the top. And then I'll take my sentiment and make sure it'll fit right in between those two lines with a little bit to spare so I can just slide it in. And it does, so I'm going to go ahead and trim that out. So here are my three pieces, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take out that middle piece and put my sentiment inside. And so now I'm ready to adhere these pieces to the card base. I'm going to start with the bottom one. I'm going to put two pieces of scotch foam tape, and you can see I'm leaving about an eighth of an inch at the top there to slide my sentiment into. And uh, I'm going to peel off the backing, and then I'm going to grab my misty so I can line it up using the corner. So I just line both corners up, and I'll end up with everything lined up perfectly. So once I get that done, I'm going to then put the top piece on, which is my three inch piece. I'll put some scotch foam tape on that as well. And then I'll put it in my misty and get it lined up. And now for the sentiment, uh, because I left a little bit of a gap on the foam tape, I'm just going to take my tape runner and then I can just slide it in where that gap was and it'll fit just right in between the two panels. And as long as I line up that left edge to be straight against my card base, everything should line up just right. So I'll press that into place, and then I wanted to set off the sentiment a little bit from the background, so I took my Stampin' Up! black marker and a ruler, and I just drew two lines, one at the top and one at the bottom. It sort of enclosed my sentiment a little bit. And that is the card for today. It's pretty simple and uh, easy to do, and I think it came out really nice. And I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.